What's up guys, Devil Dog Gamer here. Today I'm going to be talking about this little beauty. This is my gun trust. I'm not going to open it because it has all personal information. Nice, professionally done, none of this $155 gun trust bullshit. So what does this thing do? Now whenever I buy an NFA item or a gun, any gun, doesn't matter, the trust owns it. I don't own it, Mrs. Devil Dog doesn't own it, this trust owns it. So the reasoning behind this is, you may have heard me in the past say that my sheriff decided to stop signing off on Form 4s, um, therefore making it impossible for me as a personal person to get a SBR, because for a, you know, a, a person to get one, you need a sheriff or a chief law enforcement officer to sign off on a Form 4. The trust, on the other hand, doesn't need that signature. This is how I bypass that bullshit. All I have to do is submit my, my stuff with this, the, the gun trust, my fingerprints, passport photo, send it in, and then the gun trust owns it. Now, coming July, Obama changed the laws to where everybody listed in this gun trust will have to submit their fingerprints and passport photos to get a single gun. Everybody in the trust. Right now, the trust is only me and Mrs. Devil Dog. So every time we buy a, um, an NFA item, which is an SBR, suppressor, machine gun maybe in the future, um, we both have to submit, uh, pe past July, both submit our stuff for that single gun. Then the trust owns it. Now, why is this trust also super important? Not only does it bypass the sheriff, it secures and transfers all of these firearms in case of my death or incapacitation. Um, now, let's say I didn't have this gun trust, and I died. Well, now Mrs. Devil Dog is living in a house full of NFA items that she doesn't own, nor belong to her, and that is totally illegal, and she could totally be arrested for that shit. Um, getting those transferred out would be a huge, huge pain in the ass for her to do after my death. This takes care of all of it. It goes right to her, in her name, she can be in the house with it, no issue. If me and Mrs. Devil Dog both die in this gun trust, we have a, another person, her father or my father, that will take the guns into possession from the trust, all authorized through here, until our daughter comes of age as of 21, and then it goes to her. Um, this is a super important thing. I feel like if you own a gun at all, it, this is something super serious that you need. Um, it is very important. It's like a will for guns almost. It, it really is. Um, I actually like it. This is probably one of the best investments I've ever made, and it also got me thinking about doing a will. I used to have a will when I was in the Marines, that's so fucking old and outdated that literally I don't even own the shit I own to the Marines anymore. Um, so this got me thinking about a will, so we're also going to do a will here soon. Um, but this is super important. Glad I got it. Got to start using it immediately, starting to put in as much stuff before the July cutoff uh, as possible so I can get all grandfathered in. Which brings me to my next topic, the SCAR-17. You guys know my beautiful SCAR-17. Now we've talked about... SBRing this before because right now it's a 16 inch barrel. It's quite long. I don't really like it where it is. Um, so for me to SBR this, what I need to do is first fill out a form one, which allows me to change a firearm into an SBR, um, get that taken care of, done, and then I'm going to have a gunsmith. Hold on, I don't like how this thing's down. There we go. Then have a gunsmith come by chop it to about here and then we put on a new muzzle brake get that pinned on and then we'll be able to put a suppressor on and everything and instead of this length of barrel it'll be about to here and here now the only problem about that is this weapon right now is set up for a 16 inch barrel this is the gas block this is where you know the gas comes in to push the cycle the bolt back change a new round in there are important factors you need to look at and I've been doing a lot of research and a lot of reading before you just send it off to a gunsmith who may or may not know exactly what the fuck he's doing. Um, this barrel, this gas block is rated for a 16 inch barrel. Now say I cut it to 10 inch, is that going to be enough of the gas, the gas block going to have enough barrel length to capture enough gas to push back the bolt or is it going to die? It will not cycle. Um, these are important things you got to look at. So far I, it seems like I might be good depending on where the cut is and how the cut is, clean cut it is. You can't just send these things to any Joe Schmo um, gunsmith because of the cut can destroy the integrity of the barrel if it's not if it's not clean and careful enough. Also, noting that what muzzle brake and suppressor system are going to be able to work on a 10-inch scar? 
Um, that's an important aspect because a lot of suppressors need a certain muzzle brake to work on to have the the suppressor um, attach. So you need to figure out what suppressor and muzzle brake you're going to use before you even send it in. Because if you just if I just go and get this muzzle brake attached, well, guess what? Ain't no suppressor fitting on this son of a bitch. So now I got to go get the muzzle brake removed and a new one put on. It all needs to be done in one get go. Um, a 10 inch. 762 is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. A lot of people think that you cut a barrel short and you lose velocity, range, accuracy. That's just wrong. Um, maybe a little bit, but it's not much of a factor to really make such a difference. Like, wow, okay, this thing shoots like shit all of a sudden. Um, FN actually creates entire barrel, short barrel, barrel assemblies. They're expensive though. So where I could completely open this up put a 10 inch in after I get my form one all in one go and not have to worry about a thing. Um, that's not something I want to do because just money wise, it's $1,800 just for the 10 inch barrel assembly. Fucking serious. When I could spend 500, get this thing converted to an SBR and have enough left over to get a suppressor for that amount of price. Um, that's something that I definitely would not say to do. Don't get the barrel assembly from them. Gunsmiths can do this. They're smart enough to do this. And, I kind of want to get an adjustable gas block on here. Actually, I think this one is the adjustable. Possibly is. Anyways, so this is the next step. We're going to SBR this. Along with that, um, I'm going to put in the Form 1 for this, a suppressor for this, and my Form 4 for my Mark 18, all in one go to beat the July cutoff. So we'll have a new suppressor, an SBR SCAR 17, and an SBR Mark 18, hopefully grandfathered in before Mrs. Devil Dog has to add her stuff into it. Um, this thing's going to be beastly. I'm definitely keeping the EOTech on it. I'm going to push the EOTech up a little bit, get a magnifier on the back end, and go from there. With the Mark 18, I'm probably just going to put an Aimpoint T1 on because I like the T1s. They're very nice. Not sure what suppressor system I'm going to use on here. Apparently AAC does not work with um, SCARs. They say don't use it. Too many baffle strikes. Won't use short barrels anything like that, but this is the next project. Hopefully I'm going to shorten the barrel length because I don't like how long it is. I want to make it a lot shorter. It's going to be a nice system. Definitely excited for it. But anyways, boys, now that we got all the gun stuff sorted out, we'll start getting some more guns, show them off a little bit, and do a lot more shooting. Anyways, guys, if you got any comments, questions, concerns, leave it in the comments below. Talk to you guys later. Peace.